Have you ever wondered how hackers can literally sit inside someone else's computer without even touching it? Sounds like a movie, right? Well, today I am going to show you how it actually works. But before you panic, this is all happening on my private lab setup. I've got a Windows 10 virtual machine running locally on my own computer. So don't worry, this is 100% safe, ethical and legal. Now here's the interesting part. Once you understand how this works, you'll start seeing your own computer in a completely different way. You'll realize just how fragile the line is between control and being controlled. And trust me, the moment when the red connects back to me, that's the moment you'll go, damn, now I get how hackers actually do it. So grab some popcorn, because this is going to be both scary and interesting. Let's start with the basics. What exactly is a RAT? RAT stands for Remote Access Trojan. Think of it as a little program that pretends to be harmless, but once you run it, it secretly gives control of your computer to someone else. With a RAT, an attacker could log your keystrokes, open your webcam, browse your files or even install more malware. It's basically like giving a stranger the keys to your house, but you didn't even notice you handed them over. Sounds terrifying, right? But remember, knowledge is power. The more you know about this, the less likely you are to fail for it. Now the specific tool I'll be using is called Nanocore. It's a very well known red, which is hard to find on the internet today. Hackers love it because it's easy to configure and it comes with modules like reverse shells, file browsers, keyloggers, even screen capture. It's like an entire hacker's toolbox packed into one program. And here's something fascinating. Tools like this often spread on forums or through telegram groups. But again, we're not going there. Everything you'll see here is only inside my isolated lab. So let's see the stage. We've got a Windows 10 virtual machine. This is going to be the target and the attacker's control center. Alright, ready for some action? First step is configuring Nanocore. I can click on the builder and select builder settings. From here I can enter my IP address which I can check from CMD by entering command IP config. You can see that my local IP is 192.168.1.111 and this IP address will be the IP of our host machine, so I can enter it in primary connection host. This is basically telling the red, call me back on this address. Next we set the port number. Think of a port as a specific door in a huge building. The IP is the building itself and the port is the exact door where the visitor should knock. Fun fact, there are 65,535 ports, but attackers usually stick to common ones like 4444 or 8080, so I'll set it to 4444. Once the IP and port are set, we're ready to build the payload. The payload is just a small executable file, nothing fancy. To the victim, it might look like a normal program. It could even be masked as something innocent, like a PDF reader installer or a game crack. That's why rats are so dangerous. It's not about how advanced the code looks, it's about how easily someone can be tricked into clicking it. To configure a custom payload, you must go through all these options inside the builder. Here I will enable the option Skip UAC Warnings, Run Client when computer starts, Set Process Break on Termination Flag, Prevent User and Software Slip, and Keyboard Logging. Now I can click on Compile, give the name to my payload, for example Save App, and click on Save. If I get a prompt whether I want to add a provided connection port into the port manager and enable it, I can just click yes and I'm done. Now this warning says that I can only establish connections on my local network, but I will click on yes because this is only a demonstration in my own local lab. So right now we got our little Trojan horse ready. I can show you that everything is set up and the listener is waiting for the connection. If I click on network and select port manager, you can see that port 4444 is listening. The listener is like a phone waiting for a call. It just sits there, silently, until the red on the target machine dials in. No firewall warnings, no flash alerts, it's quiet and effective. And here's a little teaser. Once we get that connection, you'll see how much power we instantly gain. It's wild. Alright, now comes the big moment. We execute the payload on our Windows 10 VM. 
and watch closely. The victim sees absolutely nothing unusual. The file runs, no pop-ups, no scare red warning boxes. To them, it looks like nothing happened. But inside Nanocore app, exactly. We just got a connection back. And that, my friends, is the moment the attacker takes over. Now let's explore what we can actually do. I can reboot the system or shut it down. I can browse the files, edit the registry, open the CMD or task manager, even swap mouse buttons or unswap them. I can open the websites, scare the user by sending him a creepy messages. I can even remotely execute the scripts or perform the stress test on his local network. And the best part you've all been waiting for is accessing the camera or microphone, controlling the mouse and monitoring the keyboard. And yes, there are even more options, but you get the idea, right? Now pause for a second and think about this. All it took was one click, one execution of a file. That's why reds are so effective in real attacks. Most people think, oh, I will never fall for that. But in reality, when that file is named something tempting like free Spotify premium.exe, you'll be surprised how many people run it without thinking twice. And that's the exact weakness attackers exploit. So how do you protect yourself? First, don't run random executables, obviously. If you didn't download it from the official website, don't trust it. You can use antivirus. Most threats can be detected, but only if your defenses are actually turned on. Keep systems updated. Exploits often rely on outdated software. Think before you click it. Social engineering is 90% of the game. Remember, security isn't about having the strongest lock. It's about not leaving your door wide open in the first place. So, that's the inside story of how our remote access trojan works. We built it, we executed it, we took control. All in a safe and ethical environment. If you found this video eye-opening, make sure to hit that like button. And if you want to keep learning about the world of hacking, cybersecurity and defense, subscribe because I've got plenty more deep dives coming your way. And who knows, maybe this knowledge will even inspire you to get into cybersecurity yourself. Until next time, stay curious and stay safe. Bye.